Hello, today we're going to be reading The Curious Garden by Peter Brown. This is one of my favorite books and I bet you'll find out why after we're done reading. Before we get started, I wanted to show you the cover and ask you a couple of questions. First, where do you think this garden is? Maybe it's in a city or maybe it's more towards a country. Who do you think the boy sitting on top of the tree is? Hmm, can you see anything special about the boy? Did the illustrator and author give you any clues to help answer these questions? As we're reading today, I want you to keep those questions in your brain, but I also want you to think of some vocabulary words as we read today. There are gonna be three words that I want you to listen for. They are, Curious. What was that word? Curious. Delicate. Say that word with me. Delicate. And dreary. Say that last word. Dreary. Let's go ahead and get started. The Curious Garden by Peter Brown. There once was a city without gardens or trees, or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. I just heard that special vocabulary word. Did you hear the word dreary? Let's read that sentence with the word dreary in it again. Listen. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. Hmm. Looking at this picture and knowing the words we just read, what does dreary mean? Well, I know that the city doesn't have any greenery of any kind, so no plants. And I'm noticing that the colors on this page are kind of dark. Browns and blacks and dark green. So I think dreary could mean kind of sad or plain. I don't see any pretty colors or plants here. However, there was a boy who loved being outside, even on drizzly days while everyone else stayed inside. You could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for the curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wildflowers and plants were the last things he had expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. I'm curious, what do you think Liam might do? Do you think he's going to leave the plants alone? Or do you think he's going to help the plants? Why do you think that? Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned and he had a few pruning problems, but the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener and the plants began to feel 
like a real garden. Most gardens stayed in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the Curious Garden explored every corner of the railway. Now on that page, we had the word delicate. Delicate was our second vocabulary word. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna read that part that has the word delicate in it again, and we'll see if we can figure out what it means. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. What's that word again? Delicate. Let's look at the picture to help us. The weeds and mosses are starting to go and then my more delicate plants are starting to show up. Hmm, what do you think delicate could mean? If you look at the plants, these are the more fragile flowers. These are the flowers that need some extra care to grow. Moss and weeds are strong plants. They can pretty much grow anywhere, but delicate plants need some extra help. Now this page does not have any words, so let's just look at the picture for a second. What do you notice is starting to happen? Here's another page with no words, but we can still see that the story is progressing. Things are still happening in the story, even though there are no words to read. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season. And for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. Hmm, I wonder why he couldn't visit the plants. Maybe because the snow was in the way? Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. Now there are a couple of clues hidden in the pictures here. First, we see Liam in the window and it looks like he's reading but there's no words on the cover. What do you see instead? A picture of a flower. So that makes me think that Liam is reading about how to take care of flowers. Then on the bottom here, it shows the snow melting. So what is Liam doing? He's getting his tools and heading to the garden. He's probably gonna use that knowledge that he learned from the book to help him. Winter had taken a toll on the garden. Oh, what does Peter Brown mean by taking a toll on the garden? I know toll can mean like when I go on the highway and I pass through the little gates, I have to pay some money so I can be on the highway. Is that the kind of toll they're talking about? Hmm. Let's use the clue in the illustration to help figure it out. What does he mean by took a toll on the garden? Well, I'm seeing that the garden is not as beautiful as it was back in the springtime when we first started the book. Hmm. So I think toll means that winter did a little bit of damage to the garden. Do you think that 
the little boy is going to be able to bring it back? Maybe with some help from that book he read. Let's keep reading. But thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter's sleep. Was your guess correct? Was he able to bring it back? Yes. The garden has always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the little tough weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. There's that word delicate again. Do you remember what it means? Fragile. The garden was especially curious about old forgotten things. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Others mysteriously popped up all at once. As I'm reading, remember that last vocabulary word we had? Curious? What was the word? Say it with me. Curious. Hmm, it's mentioned how the garden has been curious throughout this whole book. Keep thinking of what that word might mean. But the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. Remember, a gardener is someone who takes care of the garden. Here's another page with just a picture. And again, we don't need words to help us continue the story. The pictures can help that too. So what are the pictures saying in this page? That curious garden is going all sorts of different places in that city. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed. That means that plants, are growing and growing and taking over more and more of the city. But of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all began. Now remember that it said many years later. So this page kind of went into the future a little bit. If you're looking at these characters closely, who do you think that they are if this is many years later? I know that if it's many years later, this can't be the little boy we started with at the beginning. Can you spot where the little boy is now? I think the little boy is this man. He grew up. And if this man is the little boy grown up, then who do you think this is? And this and this. Maybe that's his family. And they all help take care of the garden now. And here's our final picture of the story. Now remember, the title was Curious, the Curious Garden. So what does the word curious mean? Well, if you remember, at the very beginning of the story, the garden was very small. Only a few plants, right? And they were starting to die. But then Liam started to give them care and he watered them, and he made sure that they were growing. And those plants started to travel, and they wanted to see more of the city. So this curious garden wanted to know more. It was very curious, or it wanted to see and know more about the city. It started to grow, and it started to go to new places that it hasn't been before. So let's compare the first page to the last page. How did the city change from the beginning of the story to the end of the story? So you'll notice it's gonna be the same picture. It's like a plane or a bird went up into the sky and snapped a picture of the city. So there's the first page. Now let's look at the last page. Whoa, 
That is a big difference, isn't it? What changed from the first page to the last page? If you said that the city now is more colorful and has greenery and plants and looks like it came to life, then you would be correct. The city looks vibrant and much more happy than it did at the beginning. Now, there's something you could do at home to help your understanding at the end of the story. If you have a piece of paper and some crayons or a pencil, then grab them now. Here is what we can do at the end of the story to help us understand more. I want you to think of ways that you can make your place a greener place. It could be your house, it could be your neighborhood, or it could be your whole town. What are some ways that you can make your place more greener? You can give me a list, or you can draw me a picture, or you can do both. Come up with a couple of ideas to help make your place a greener place. Thanks for reading The Curious Garden with me. I hope you enjoyed it.